Hi there, it's me in Malmo, Sweden, just across the water from Copenhagen. So last week we were in Milan. The day after we arrived in Milan, we had the main show, and that's quite unusual for us because usually it's like at the end of the week. So the show was at the Teatro dell'Arte, which is a really beautiful venue. And we opened the day by actually meeting a lot of the enablers uh, who came to the Milan shows, who really supported the beginning of the tour and enabled us to do a lot of the things that we're now doing. So we thank them very much. We didn't quite deliver everything that we, we hoped, but what we did have is these lovely intimate uh, acoustic um, shows. And this one was done backstage um, before everyone started sound checking. And they requested some songs and it was really beautiful, just a beautiful grand piano with kind of light and a few seats. <laughs> I ended up wearing Nadia's Gorbani, this beautiful red dress with these kind of look like little red sugar cubes on the top, uh, on the front, and then on the back was a mirror. Why are you got a mirror behind you? And she explained to me that this was about um, her learning to speak and understand the hearing world, because she's a non-hearing person. And that she first of all started to learn to speak in the mirror, like trying to lip read. And, uh, and then when she was taught how to like say p and b, she could feel the air on her hand and in her mind that kind of made her feel like these little cubes. So I love this dress of the kind of her, her, her journey um, into the hearing world um, and how to communicate. So that's the, that's the piece I wore, which is really lovely and quite constricting um, to walk around on the stage, but it was fun. And then that night was the first night where Chris Vatilaro, who's this percussionist that I love and I've used, to, if you've seen me play over the last 10 years, you'll have seen me play with him. I mean, he literally had never rehearsed with us for this tour. <laughs> and he just, just played a blinder. It was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> And there was quite a lot of people who turned up um, to say hello at the end of the night. And I went outside because there were still a few people hanging around, some fans outside. So I, I went in, I went over and said hello. And a couple of them said, oh, if only you'd played just for now. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you guys sing with me, we can do it now. Um, so we brought in the enablers and there was about, I don't know, 15 of us. And we went into a room into the, in the Teatro de l'Art. And uh, we started singing just for now in three part harmony. Just for now. And it was really, really fun. They're really good singers. Just for now. Just for now. And then the next day was our Changemaker Forum, where we actually had a whole host of events going on uh, in another space in the Teatro dell'Art. Like, it was the biggest um, Changemaker Forum that we've done. We had probably 40 people in the room or 50 people, maybe more. It was really, really full, loads of people. It's so big that we didn't actually know what to do with them all because we didn't have enough uh, facilitators. Um, but we discussed, yeah, about the Creative Passport. We think we found a few ambassadors there who are going to help us launch the Creative Passport and host their own party, which we've been just discussing more and more with people as we go around uh, this European leg. We also held our exhibition there. So thanks to Emma for pulling all of that together and you could read about the life of a song and see, see the project there and have a little look at the Mimi gloves. Perfect. Oh well. We had a kids workshop actually. Um, Helen Steer came over who developed the Mini Mew with Mimi, uh, which are going to be on sale in I think about a week now. Exciting. So she had a couple of kids there making their own gloves and uh, they came and Helen said it was a really good session. So after that I gave a keynote and I was interviewed by Sabina Gabucci and there were loads of people there. And then I did a song. I did a song for Hide and Seek and uh, Breathe In and I did a little demo of the gloves to explain because there's loads of musicians there. And uh, it was really nice. I love getting on the floor like where everyone else is and just kind of roaming around. It just feels very natural and nice and not kind of showy stuck up on stage so I really enjoyed that day. <laughs>
I'd like to say a big thank you to Emma and the Ponderosa promotions team for making that day run really smoothly because it was pretty, there's a lot of things going on in one space. So thank you to everyone for hosting us. So on that day, on the Wednesday, I wore Maria Latteruli's coat. It's a beautiful coat. I wanted to wear her dress, actually, but it was a little bit small for me. Um, but she's really gorgeous uh, designer work that she does. I'd like to, I'd like to work more with her and Nardjes, actually. I just found some great designers on this tour. We should do a whole little montage at some point of all the different outfits and how they looked, because it's really been great. I'd like to continue doing this around the world. So the next day was a day off. That was our family day. and. We ended up, it was quite a simple day actually, we just spent it around the Milano uh, Cathedral, the Duomo, and we ended up going right down to the crypt. We, we heard an organist play in the, in the cathedral, it's really beautiful in there. Scout always likes it because it kind of feels a bit like a palace. And um, we then went right up to the top, and I'd never been on the top of a cathedral before, and it was really, it was quite um, an eerie sensation being up there. It was like the end of the night and it was becoming quite misty. It was really beautiful, so we had a nice time up there. So the Friday was our last day in Milan. It was quite short, it was one of the shortest weeks, and we spent the day mostly in an office space next door called Copernico, where we just caught up, because there's tons to catch up on with the team. Caught up with Mark Yarn, as I had been doing the whole time throughout that Milan trip. And I also Skyped in for a Berkeley Open Music Initiative event that was being held in Boston, and Brian from Pro, who also helps us out with mycelia, was there in person and it was great actually because it's George Howard um, was there hosting, talking to me and he was the first person that set all of this in motion really because um, he contacted Zoe Keating and said do you know anyone in the music space who's doing stuff in blockchain and Zoe my friend said oh yeah Imogen, Imogen is and I hadn't done anything at all I was just like very intrigued in what blockchain could do for the music industry and so when he called me up, I said, look, to be honest, I'm not developing anything, but I'm happy to share what I'm, up, what I'm thinking. And then he really put me into this um, thinking mode and I started ideating. And then, you know, the, the idea of it being called mycelia kind of came out of that. And then we, we did this article, which was, you know, just changed my life, really, because thousands of people got in touch with us and emailed us as completely inundated and actually set up the you know the organisation because of that and needed to take on people, but actually it was George it was George's interview that set everything in motion and funnily enough um, it was the same time as Berkeley Open Music Initiative uh, released this Rethink Music paper, which was oh, I don't know if it was like week after or week before but it was like around the same time when you know Berkeley very well respected academic institution. Um, did some big research explaining that $45 billion a year of royalty payments get distributed um, around the ecosystem to the musicians, but actually only half of that money makes it to the right people. And that was their, um, that was their reasons for doing the paper. And at the same time, there's me on the other side just talking about from one, artist, one musician's perspective how the inefficiency in the music industry is affecting me and how if we could kind of bring this together and use smart contracts to, to you know, distribute payments and have one space or a linked space where songs could acknowledge their entire selves and uh, help everyone do business with them. So it's interesting. So there we go. So that all came to a nice conclusion um, with a lot of people in the audience. IBM was in there as well. And so who knows what might come from these discussions. So yeah, and then the next day we flew to where we are now, which is in Copenhagen stroke Malmo. Yeah, so there we go. Until next time. Oh, and thank you to Jayway, which is the offices that we're in now, who've been hosting our brilliant design sprint, which we'll tell you all about next week. But it's been very, very insightful. And I can't wait to tell you all about it. OK, bye. Hot circles in the carpet.